Welcome to Enviro Close Up. I am Carl Grossman. Increasingly in the United States, the relationship between the environment, particularly a polluted environment, and breast cancer is being realized, including in Massachusetts. And with us is Janet Marinin. She is the vice president of the Massachusetts Breast Cancer Coalition. Dr. Carlos Sonnenschein, he's a very important source person for that coalition, as well as being at the Tufts University School of Medicine, doctor. Okay. And Dr. Kathy Bregovin, right. who is a psychiatrist by profession and also an activist in the Massachusetts Breast Cancer Coalition. And officer, are you the secretary? Yes. Kathy, the relationship, I mean, there are people who are still saying that the reason women get breast cancer is because they eat too much pastrami or corned beef. It's, it's something that, uh, I don't know, people do to themselves in certain uh, specific, what's your feel? Um, well, the Massachusetts Breast Cancer Coalition is very concerned about these so-called behavioral, behavioral risk factors for breast cancer. Um, we're concerned because we feel that all women are at risk. There are some 1.6 million women presently in the United States with breast cancer and possibly another million who have yet to be diagnosed. The numbers of women with breast cancer are staggering and, as you all know, are increasing yearly. Breast cancer is one of the cancers that has absolutely not been affected by the so-called war in cancer. Breast cancer incidence is actually rising 4% every year. It is an epidemic in every, women, in, in every way. And as I said before, all women are at risk. The coalition really feels that there has to be a reason that this is happening and that so much research for so long, $24 billion has been spent on cancer research. Um, and the research has been on the same old, same old thing, which is basically treatment. Do you use chemotherapy before surgery? Do you use chemotherapy after surgery? What chemotherapy do you use for metastases? While we're very, very concerned about the treatment of breast cancer, we're concerned that research has not been done adequately on what is causing cancer. And we are all demanding that the cause of breast cancer be determined so that we can eradicate this disease. Now, the environment in breast cancer, the linkage as you see it. Um, there are a number of things in the environment which have been shown to be linked to breast cancer. They fall into a number of categories. There are radiation effects, both medical and therapeutic radiation, as well as radiation from nuclear power plants. Um, there is concern about EMFs, there's concern about combustion products from incinerators and uh, from cars, and there are a number of concerns about chemicals and pesticides in the environment which fall into the category of xenoestrogens, chemicals which do not look um, uh, by their uh, chemical structure like estrogens, but quite surprisingly act as estrogens in our body driving our hormonal systems toward cancer. That's the theory, at least. Um, and it's a very provocative theory, and one which we're very concerned about and would like to see much more effectively studied. And doctor, you've been studying this, this linkage, the, this relationship between a polluted environment and breast cancer, and what have you been finding? That's right. Uh, in fact, uh, our research has been specifically funded by the National Cancer Institute to find out what is the mechanism by which estrogens affect the proliferation of cells, specifically breast cancer cells. And this is how Dr. Anna Soto and myself have been uh, instrumental in proposing a number of, of uh, uh, hypotheses to explain that. The interesting uh, development that I wanted to relate to you is the fact that as I said before, our research is based on what is called basic uh, principles, but uh, it was uh, about five years ago that we bumped into an accident that called to our attention the problems that uh, Kathy has uh, uh, mentioned before. Uh, in the process of our uh, research, we discovered that the, the plastic centrifuge tube that we used to uh, used for our research pr uh, project became contaminated with the uh, estrogenic xenobiotic or uh, xenoestrogen 
like it was mentioned before. Janet, what are government agencies from the federal level to the state level to the local level doing about this epidemic? I mean, your group has been out there trying to get action from government. Talk about your experience. We began the Mass Breast Cancer Coalition in 1991, at which point the government spending for breast cancer research was only $90 million at that point. And since we began another grassroots organization similar, it has now jumped to over $400 million for breast cancer research. Um, and that's really just from women expressing their anger over this and that we're not happy with the status quo of mammograms as being early detection and that we want answers about how to prevent this rather than how to treat it with different chemotherapy um, protocols. And an example, we just recently, um, there was a study put out that listed the top 10 towns for breast cancer incidents. And of those towns, seven were on the Cape. And one individual down there, who's a member of the Mass Breast Cancer Coalition and very active, said, you know, this is ridiculous, this has to stop, we're gonna find answers. And she spoke up and rallied and because of that, we now were granted $1.2 million to do a study down the Cape. Um, the Cape is amazing, the Cape Cod or Eastern Long Island, mm -hmm. these places with very low population, but both being downwind from nuclear power right. plants, both uh, being dependent on uh, a water supply, which has become tainted by chemicals. Uh, I'm sure it's probably synergistic in terms of, of cancer in mm -hmm. general, but in, in the Cape, uh, what do you think uh, might be the, the, uh, the cause there? What's, what's, what's the feeling of the group? We actually, as an offspring from the Mass Breast Cancer Coalition, have started what's called the Silent Spring Institute, mm. um, which Carlos is working on as well, and Kathy is on the board. And there has to be a lot of research done in it. Um, I don't feel qualified to guess at what's causing it. There's certainly a lot of um, military bases down there, and there are a lot of possibilities. This has been Enviro Close-Up. I'm Carl Grossman. Mm -hmm.